Hey you doing legends, we're back for another video. We're going to be going through the guns in the center position and also the wing fullback. So I hope you take a lot out of this one. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you did that and hit a like on this video. Let's get it out to more people. Uh, we're still getting a lot of newbies coming in. Uh, so if you are new, welcome. And obviously very much an analysis channel here. And throughout the season, we'll be getting uh, lots of videos out. We have a, a team ourselves, uh, also yeah, for myself, also the people's team, which uh, if you haven't yet joined the Discord group, I'll pop that link in the description. And uh, we you know, everyone jumps in and, and has a say in the team that we create. And, and you know, a, lot of, a lot of chat on game days in that as well. So if you'd like to, please hit that link in the description. So let's start with the center guns. And Tony Staggs is going to be our first one. First thing we'll say with him is he's going to be hampered by the, the tackle bus stats. Obviously super talented, big try scorer. Uh, just didn't get on the park much last year, only four games. And we'll and we'll see that in our stats here. Just the four games and, and you know 60 minutes in that first game, and then three tries across the next three games. And he doesn't even make a, he's not someone that works all, you know, extremely hard on uh, on the attacking side in terms of his meters gain. He sort of he gets the ball fairly close to the line, and if you get him one on one, he's gonna score. So he's got that, he's obviously got that talent. You can see in his tackle breaks, you know, that, that four games, he got four, two, eight, and five, and plenty, you know, uh, along the season, uh, sorry, across 2020. Not many offloads, so he's obviously offset by that uh, in, in the negative way for the lack of tackle bust, uh, sorry, for too many tackle busts there. Um, so just see for him at 600K, you know, he's priced at 48. So a little bit of more value in some of the other guys at this stage. He, you know, has a chance of playing Origin and stuff as well. So I look to him a little bit throughout the season. We might be able to get him maybe around the 550 mark, but I don't see him dropping. Don't see him dropping too much, but not a lot of upside at the same time. So that's it with Stags. If we look to someone like Matty Burden at 593k, obviously a little bit uh, under Katoni, but he has that dual position, which is going to be really cool for a starter. He's now got the Dogs, you know, as his team. He's obviously really talented, and he does a bit of everything. You know, and you're getting that in the center position, which is very, very difficult to get guys that are going to be averaging 50 plus. Like Stags came in and had four really awesome games, and still averaged 48. So you'd expect a really strong half, like Burton, who hasn't played a lot in the position in the top grade, but you know, he's going to be doing the majority of the work. If he's going to be having Avrilo in his sixth role, even you know the majority of guys that they have as options, you know Flanagan will do a little bit more kicking, for example. But you'd expect this to be Burton's team. And I was just thinking earlier today about Burton. And if we're watching him play and you don't own him, I just feel like you're, you're sitting there and going, oh, he just got, he's just got points from that. He's got points from his, you know, his kicking, his running. He's going to score tries. He's going to put on some tries. He's going to tackle. Like There's just so many things that he can do now that he didn't get that opportunity, opportunity to do in the centers. And if you're looking at you know that average you know, of 48.6, comes mainly from center. You know, we've got we've got a halfback game at the start there. You know, he's kicking for 584 meters, for example, which is incredible. But then the majority of the games in the centers, obviously a lot of tries there, but it is still much harder to score really well in that center position. You just have a lot of less things to do. The try assist obviously has that to to his winger in, in Toto, and that was helpful. But you know, he's more opportunities for try assist at number seven and or an all number six doesn't really matter for him. And you look at when he does play. In that role, obviously that's been next to Jerome Luai, and, and the kick meters are huge. So obviously we lose a little bit with that this year, but he's just going to get stats across the park. If you look at some of these games, he's got decent tackling stats. Obviously this one's a little bit high, that 23. But you'd expect him to be somewhere between 15 and 20 in his um, in his tackle stats. You know his missed tackles weren't great across that time when he was playing in that six role, for example. And the centers, it's been okay, but. Yeah, I just feel like you you'll you'll hate watching him and just the, the you know you look at it's been thirty minutes into the game and he's got the he's got the try assist or he's got the random try and just the general general work in play and he'll be on thirty. You can just see that regularly and he'll end up like on a sixty average or a fifty five or you know, even even fifty for him is gonna be solid, you know, getting that in the center position as someone who's not gonna play origin. We doubt that has a dual position. I just think you're getting him at a keeper level in the centers, obviously owned by 31.69%. So it's a pretty obvious one, Matty Burton there. Okay, Joey Manu. Had his best season yet. So I had him in my team for a majority of last year. And he stayed there. You know, really, really good during the origin period. So I'd expect that would be a time that a lot of people would pick him up. Robbo uh, has said that he has a license to roam around this year. You know, spend a bit of time, obviously, you know, in the in the back line with with Teddy, which would be really cool. Uh, you know, he could be like that sweeping play, obviously not having to sit exactly in his center role, 
a little bit like what we saw with Tommy Chaboyevic in uh, in Origin. So I think that's a really good thing for him. And knowing that now, I don't think he's going to lose much value. I can see him averaging very close to where he was at that you know at that five ninety price, which gets him. Yeah, a 48 average price of 47 has the dual position center wing fullback. So for me, at 8% ownership, he's probably probably slightly too high from what I think he should be at this point. I, I I'd be picking up closer to Origin, and that's where I'd expect him to have that 10 to 15% ownership. But right now, I just don't see the value in him. 48 is pretty high for a center who, yes, is going to roam a little bit, and he's going to be in a solid side with the Roosters. But they also have a lot of guys to, to do a lot of the work. Obviously, last year they were they were down on some troops, so. Yes, Kiri, you know, Kiri's back. He will he will get uh, Manu will get some benefic will be a beneficiary of Kiri's passes, for example, his kicks through the line to get some tries, etc. But he won't have to do as much of the carrying like he did last year. Obviously he played a bit of fullback when uh, when when Teddy was out and did really well in those times. So yeah, I can just see him averaging about what he uh, is priced at at this point. Gagai is someone I don't want to spend too much time on. Obviously had an incredible season, lots of tries and try assists for the uh, for the Rabbitohs last year, but just had plenty of open space to get a bunch of tackle breaks, and he's going to be losing a fair bit of that this year. And that's something to think about with with someone like Burton. If we just drop back to him, there is yes, he has some tackle breaks in the centres, but he's not as many as some people, right? A lot of games are two, one, zero, uh, the odd three or four game, right? So he's not going to be hampered by that. With someone like with someone like Gagai, that's uh, where he gets a lot of his points. You can see that games are six, seven, four, five. As a, as a standard there, and lots of meters gained. Coming to the Knights team, I just don't see him being able to average that 47. Yes, he'll put on some tries, he'll do okay, but um, I just don't see him hitting that, probably around that 42, 43. So he's gonna, should go down on his value, on his current starting price there. So we, we won't, won't talk about him too much. Someone like Jesse Ramian comes in with uh, a really nice average, obviously 49, and he's actually been priced down to 46 just based on the fact that he has a lot of tackle breaks in his game look at these first you know six games there he has a game with 7 10 10 and 13 to go along with a very stock standard six and seven average there throughout the rest of the season so he's going to lose you know on average around five to six points in tackle breaks which is going to be really really helpful hurtful for him but he's going to offset that with offload so i think there's a little bit of a, uh, an advantage for him Yes, he has big tackle break numbers, but if he's, get, he's getting those offloads to hand, I think that's going to offset it pretty well. He has a bunch of games there with you know two two offloads a game. He's got a four, he's got a five, another four there, three. So he can he can offload and he'll be averaging a couple offloads a game. Only thing with him is you just get him as a center only, no dual position, which in a COVID field year, I think is going to be a little bit tough. But yeah, I don't see him averaging too much less than a 46 to 50. So tiny bit of value, I'd say, but... Um, not someone I'd be looking to start with at this point. And what any other chat I had in there? Um, yeah, happy to pick him up later. And again, someone that's not going to play Origin either. We'll move to Rapana, and he's someone I feel like had a really amazing year last year. He's done in the past. He's had some really, really good years on the wing for the Raiders there, and he's come back and, and done that once you know since coming back from overseas. I just don't see him improving on those scores, but you know I think he's going to be a fairly decent scorer. He's going to be a little bit more volatile than, than some of these guys like, um, sorry, I already got him in there, uh, Ramian, Burton, Manu, these types of guys, right? You see he's obviously fairly consistent last year, and that's why he scored really well. And that involved a, not a heap of tries. And you see he has those, you know, obviously a few tries at the start, and then he has a bit of a break here where he, he scored fairly low. Obviously, you know, averaging 40 over that three-game period, but a 20 and a 17, which is very normal for a winger. And that's usually why we don't select them in this uh, in this fullback position. You know, he finished off he finished off the year really, really strong. He had a 95 and 102 at fullback. He's not going to be playing fullback this year. They're going to have CNK and Savage, so he doesn't have that added benefit of the fullback position, but does have the jewel. So something to think about with Rapana, but not for now. I've realized I'm just going to quickly run over. 48 as an as an average, played a lot in the halfback position, had a really nice middle of the year there. He's kicking for massive meters. He's not going to get that this year. Will he get the sixth position? We're not sure. Will he play center? There's a few things to think about with him. With us being Burton's team now, he's not going to be averaging anywhere near that price. So I think he's a complete avoid. And at 2.7% of teams, they're going to get burnt very quickly in my eyes. Okay, you and Aiken. Really, really important one. I think it's almost a no-brainer to, to pick up in anyone's squad. I'm really keen on him, obviously, uh, especially at this price. Obviously, being one of the, the lower price guys in this center position for the guns, uh, he's going to be you know, dual position with the second row, so with the edge, sorry, playing big minutes on that edge. 
I think, um, yeah, with the attacking upside, the good work rate, and he only was the first, you know, it's the first time he played that position, right? He's always been a centre, and then he moves to the second row for the back end of the year. So obviously he scores a bunch of tries, but, you know, a 93 in there when you're making 41 tackles at 160 metres, yes, there's tries in there, but those base stats are awesome. Like, if he can get 30 and over 100 metres with a bunch of tackle breaks, the odd offload, not that he ever passes the ball, but, um, yeah, a bunch of tackle breaks there. You're looking at anywhere between a 45 to 50 floor just based on his you know his tackles and and uh tackles run meters and tackle breaks that he's going to normally get in a game you know and that already puts him just over what he's priced at currently and you add in obviously the attacking stats in you know a, a decent try uh success success rate each game i think he's going to be really really helpful and you have those random games where he gets 40 tackles 35 tackles right so he's got a 39 a 31 a 41 to finish so he has that upside between 30 and 40 tackles and over 100 meters every game so i think it's a no-brainer that you pick him up in your squad he's not going to play origin lots to talk about about you and aiken but at that price he's going to be my side for sure okay jackie bird thank you to tk for interviewing uh griffin in that uh yeah, in his latest podcast. So if you haven't listened to that yet, get around that. He talks about him right at the start. So that's um, very, very helpful for us that are listening in and wanting uh, that big news. So news is he's going to be playing big minutes in the forwards, whether it be in the middle as their ball playing uh, lock or on an edge. And yeah, the call at the end was he, you know, he's going to, he's look, going to be looking to play big minutes. And the fact that he didn't play in the middle as much last year, especially at the start, was just the workload coming off a couple of ACL injuries so put him in the centers and he obviously handled that really well and then they moved him into the middle at the back end of the year i think he's just simply going to average 50 for the year and i think you can plug him in and move on really comfortably you know you got that dual position as well but seven at least seven points of value i see him playing in the middle which we'll talk about a little bit lower here so we've had a look through three games through the middle of the season there with a 53 47 and 54 cool easy 50 without doing too much one try one try assist in that He's obviously someone that does tackle break a little bit. It's probably going to be happening a little bit less through the middle on the edge, but he's also someone that can offload, as you can see there as well. Um, you obviously can ball play, which is helpful. Okay, there's that there through the middle. Easy. Goes back to center for a couple of games. Move back to second row um, and then play in a couple of games at fullback. But 50 again in the second row and then finish off the year in the center. So for me, I think a 50 average is very, very easy to attain. He's going to be much fitter. You know, obviously coming off a year where he didn't really get injured was awesome. So a 50-point average is going to be great for Jackie Bird. I'm going to be slotting him in my team as well. Okay, Tommy Trebojevic. And this one here, he's priced at 80, coming off an 84 average season. Let's talk about that a little bit. So we do lose points in the tackle breaks. But I think you're going to get a few points from him of getting out of his in goal. So I can say that you're not going to lose too much from that aspect. But the, seriously, the amount of tries he scored... And the amount of um, you know, the try assist that he was getting, he wasn't obviously getting a ridiculous amount of tackle breaks for someone that you'd expect that you know scoring that many tries and doing a lot of it himself would get. But the meters gained and everything in between uh, was incredible. Can he do it again? I don't think so. Right, we're looking at him just having an absolute incredible year. I think he's going to lose some value and he can pick him up later. That's all we should talk about with him. And it's going to be very hard to pick up a Cleary and a Tommy. So if you, I don't know some people are going to want to just plug in Tommy instead of Cleary, I'd say, you know, with Cleary only being owned by 50%. If you're looking at doing that, he's going to be a good captaincy option. He'll have his random 80 games. He'll have the random 40 game. Yeah, so he'll be a little bit more volatile than someone like Cleary. Brian Toll. So biggest one for him is just losing those tackle but tackle bus stats, which we'll have a look at here as to how many he was, you know, through game by game, how many he was averaging. He's got a 12 or 15, sitting around the 5 to 7 mark pretty much every game across the last season. He also had an incredible amount of meters gained. Probably less tries than I would have thought. Okay, so there's probably at least staying level or a little bit of upside on the tries. I think the meters gained, is it, uns it is unsustainable? It might be like 20 or 30 meters unsustainable, but I expect a fairly similar year for him. The team's going to go well again, so you know, there's no issue that, but, but being priced at 57, it's going to be really hard to uh, sustain and attain. Um, yeah, starting with him at the back, at the beginning of last year, yeah, it would have been pretty solid at that 600-odd price point at 619. If you started with him there, uh, when the salary cap was higher, that you know would equate to about a 750, 760 today. So yes, he had some upside last year at the start, but I just don't see it here. He's going to play Origin and stuff, so I would be steering clear of Toa there. Okay, with Teddy, 695K, comes in the third highest price wing fullback. The team's going to be a lot better. 
I feel like Teddy's just going to do his thing. He's going to average near the 60 mark, you know, 55 to 60, be a top five keeper. He plays Origin, does his job. Uh, yeah, I just think you can't go wrong with selecting Teddy in your side at any point of the year, uh, especially at the start. You know, I think you want for him, you want to go dead, dead at the start or in like round 18 or 19 after he's had a week off you know, following the origin, they're your two times to pick him up. So definitely no issues with picking him up at this point of the year. Uh, but if you want to look at his stats, we can we can do that. Uh, but just, you know, really solid. Obviously an injury affected game in uh, round seven against the Dragons, getting a six in his 34 minutes, but pretty much played the big big minutes throughout. And he's really consistent. So I wouldn't be stressing about him at all. Obviously finished the year with an 108. I can't believe he had a nine. Uh, so these, these are games that are just going to be non-existent for someone like for someone like Teddy this year with a full squad, I think, you know, there's just going to be so many more opportunities for him to score. Uh, you just have that, you just need, just need that space out the back, which he's going to get with Kiri, for example. All right, Latrell, 671K. Did really well to average so high last year after the year before that he had. I just feel like his price is high enough at this stage. He's going to be great, right, in general. He's an amazing talent. He's out for the first few weeks, right? So we can't really talk about him too much. But for those that are interested, uh, he's obviously owned by 1.7%. I don't know why at this point, but he is going to be a solid pickup when he comes back. Yeah, definitely. A little bit more volatile than someone like Teddy. He's going to average similar. So I just go with Teddy over Latrell. I think it's pretty simple. That one there. Okay, Ruben Garrick. For me, the stats were super inflated. Obviously, you know, Tommy was incredible. His stats are probably inflated too just for the way that their team played. Can they keep that up? I don't think so. So Garrick's going to get less. I think they'll be like a, they'll definitely be a top six team, but I think is Garrick going to score as many tries as he did? That means, you know, the goals are going to drop down as well if they're slightly not as good, but they're going to be somewhere thereabouts. Um, I just feel like he's going to lose a bit of value at the start of the season. Because if we look at what happened with him last year, we're getting obviously a not as many tries at the start, but then you really dominated through the back end of the year. We're getting, you know, you know, games there where he's getting a couple of try assists, four line breaks, you know, four goals, a try. You know, even simple games here where they beat the Broncos, he got eight goals, right? Didn't score any any tries, but there's 16 points right there, for example. 11 goals in this 91-point game where he gets a double and four ta four, um, four assists there. Four, four, line break, four line breaks, sorry. Uh, I just can't see it sustaining, right? I can see him averaging just under 50, so he's going to lose some money. Let's move on from Garrick. All right, Walshie, let's talk about him. He's a very interesting one this year. So Warriors are going to improve, I think, a little bit. But him coming up and being priced at 53 is really strange. You know, a 48 average, yes, involves two games at limited minutes off the interchange. I just don't understand why he's been priced so much higher than, than his average. So that's my only worry for him. I can see him hitting that 53 average, just in a better team, and, and him obviously being his second year. In, in the fold, he did score a bunch of tries last year, the odd try assist, so is there a lot of value added? I think just a natural improvement to see him get somewhere near his price at 655 and a price of 53, uh, but yeah, I think he's probably a better pick closer to origin time. He shouldn't be playing, shouldn't, uh, but yeah, there's a few other guys on this list which we'll talk about right now, no, next one, um, that are going to be a little bit better, I think, at this stage. So, Gutho had another really good season. Obviously, lots of attacking stats, a solid base. I think he'll be around this price point again. So, you know, price of 52 or 51 average. He's someone that tackle breaks, not as much as other guys. He obviously had one game there with 11, but generally around that 3 to 4 will be his average. Played the majority of the season, only you know 70 minutes in a couple of games when they were dominating. He'd already scored a try or two by this point. So, if you like the Eels and you want to play Gutho on your side, I can see him averaging exactly what that is at 51 there, but I don't see him being a top sort of five to seven wing fullback, but we'll see. We've obviously got the next guy on our list who's gonna be Ryan Pappenhausen. And he here comes in at a much lighter price point at 51 than what he should be. He's owned by 38%, I think that's a no brainer. You know, we see what he did at the beginning of the year, 77, 52, 124, 124, yes, that's right. 70 and a 53 before he went down, injured against the Dragons. Thank you, Fumanu, for knocking him out. Right, so amazing, amazing average at that start. So we're not gonna expect the same thing. You obviously had a game with four tries. Um, so yeah, what do you have? Eight tries over those first five games. So obviously not to be expected, but kicking goals in this side is gonna be really important. They're a great they're gonna be a great team. He's gonna be a beneficiary of that, averaging close to, you know, in that 170 to 200 meters, I'd say. Tackle breaks, he's gonna miss out on a little bit, but his ball playing, I think, is 
is going to save him in that scenario. He does have the odd offload as well, but you know, look at his price so low because of all these interchange games, right? He had his eight when he got injured, interchange, interchange all the way for that next four games, and then moving back to fullback, but just wasn't as strong, right? He finished with an absolute bang, which popped his uh, average up that little bit more, but you know, it was good to see him leading into the final series, um, getting two good games back under his belt. So, Pat, great option. That goal kicking is really important. You know, you're adding six to eight points. Six, you know, could be some games, 10 to 12, 14, like he has that game with eight. Um, you know, if he's playing full minutes, so he's got a five and an eight, you know, a couple of lighter games against the de- some decent teams there and Rabbitohs and Eels. So if you're playing Broncos and Bulldogs or the equivalent of those guys this year, then he's got that in his game as well. So he's a great option. I'll be starting with him in that wing fullback position. Okay, two more to go. So Nico Hines at 602K. Again, if you listen to the TK podcast, he has all the friends in higher places. Can anyone work out how he knows everyone, TK? Let's just, uh, can we answer that question in the comments? If I've asked him, still won't tell me. Anyway, half and wing fullback duel. Really cool, really, really cool for Nico. What I'm saying with um with, with TK, he spoke to Fitz and it sounds like, you know, it's definitely his team now. He's going to have some, some kicking in general play, which he didn't have last year. Looks like he should have the goal kicking. He was pretty solid when at, at the Storm last year when he needed to, when Paps was down. So just there's going to be some natural improvement available for him in this role, right? He didn't play every game in 80 minutes last year. You see a couple at the start here off the interchange, three there, um, and then a game of 70 minutes, but majority of 80 after that with a couple of 40, uh, sorry, actually have three more games, sorry, 48, 45, and 32 minutes, right? So definitely some upside based on that. Obviously, fullback position is a really strong one, but the half is going to be just as good. If he can get some more uh, you know, kicking in general play, he doesn't have much at all here, right? A couple of games in the 70s and 80, uh, 70s and the 90. But if he can bump that up to 150 to 200, splitting that uh, with his running mate, whether it's Trindle. If it's Trindle, he's going to lose a little bit more kicking. If it's Moylan, you'd, you'd expect Hines to get a lot of the kicking. Uh, they, uh, Fitz spoke about Braley kicking a little bit out of dummy half as well. But just a natural improvement. Is he going to average more than 48? I think definitely. Can we see him at a 650 or 700K price point, averaging 55 easily, I think? And you get him as a, a keeper in that wing fullback position, and you can interchange him throughout the year. Shouldn't be playing Origin. I think 15% is a solid ownership. I expect it between 15 to 20 going forward. So that's him with Nico. I think he's a very solid pickup for sure. And our last one is going to be Kalen. Ponga there. So I find him a little bit undervalued just with how he, he didn't play so well last year. He came back obviously in the early rounds, round five, and, and started pretty solidly, right? 60 and 101. But just the team was going okay. He had a, obviously very much a disrupted preseason, which he's had a full preseason this year. And I think a lot of people are underestimating how important that full preseason is to, uh, to someone's building into the season and coming into their own. And Pong is obviously someone that's super talented. I can see him bouncing back for sure. He had an eight in a lower minute game, obviously there, and a finisher in a, 40, uh, a 23 in a 45 minute game uh, at the you know, the last game of the season. So a little bit of value there on those two. I can see him easily averaging somewhere between where he's at now. I can't see him going any less than that. And, and also up to about that 55 to 56, right? So he does have a bunch of offloads in his game, you can see there, uh, and also, a decent amount of tackle breaks as well, but I think they'll be fairly offset with a couple of the you know returning out of the in goals, which you get two points for that. So something to think about. Owned by ten percent of people, I actually thought it'd be more of a pod than that. But again, if you're someone who likes watching him play, you're a Knights fan, you just like Ponga in general, then I think he's going to be a solid option. That's not going to be you're not going to go down in value. He's going to be a decent keeper, but will he hit the heights of a fifty-five average where you can hold him for the entire season? I'm not exactly sure, but he has that upside. So. That's it, guys. That's for all of that, guys, in the guns category. We're going to be talking about the mid ranges next. So we'll start back at the top with the hooking position and also the uh, mids. But, yeah, that's it, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please tell your mates. Uh, and we'll get together our big overall league as well over the next few weeks. But we've still got about a month to go before the season starts. We'll get all this preseason content. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the game of footy, a uh, couple of games of footy yesterday. Uh, and we'll, um, we'll analyze that one in the next one. See you team. Have a good day.